Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of CFL Level 2. Today we will be covering the remaining portion of the first reading from fixed income which was term structure and interest rate dynamics. So in the first reading we looked at different sort of interest rates. We looked at spot rates, forward rates, par rates. We even looked at how swaps or swap fixed rates can be calculated using some of our other interest rates. And we also had a brief discussion about how the interest rate curves work. So basically all of these rates, they have curves that represent these rates along with different maturities. So all of that was the basics about interest rates. In this session, we'll be starting with the remaining portion of the first reading. And most of this portion is very theoretical in nature. The first topic in focus is going to be spreads. Now, spread is something that you have covered in a very brief manner at level one. The good thing for you is that it is just as detailed at level two as it was at level one. So you don't have any new things that would be introduced here. So let's quickly look over some of the spreads that we have. So the syllabus at level two is focusing on five major spreads. Let's look at all of them. Firstly, we have swap spread. Swap spread is the difference between yields so spread is basically difference between two interest rates two yields swap spread is the difference between swap and treasury so whatever interest rates you have on a swap contract minus the interest rates or the yields that you have on prevailing government securities the most secured securities that we assume for our fixed income curriculum so swap is a comparison of swap rates with the treasury rates the difference is known as swap spread now again in all of these the calculations are going to be fairly basic if at all they show up in the exam where you'll be given swap rates treasury rates you just have to subtract them the most technical thing the question could do is that it could ask you swap spread give you swap rates treasury rates and also give you a bond ytm just to confuse you some additional information which is not necessarily relevant next up we have i spread or interpolated spread this is the difference between a bond's yield minus swap rates now these swap rates can be interpolated in nature now what exactly does interpolated mean so effectively spread is fairly straightforward it's a difference between a bond yield with a swap contract preferably of the same maturity level so a five-year bond compared with a five-year swap i want to see what's the difference between the yields of the two but the only sort of new thing is that the swap can be calculated by way of interpolation now what exactly does that mean well this is simple case of linear interpolation for example let's say i have a bond which has 2.7 years to majority and it is having a ytm of let's say 10 percent now in case of swaps swaps are not something that the question or you know, normally in the market you won't see swap rates given at every single maturity you won't see 2.7 but what you might be able to find is that swap rates for two years are let's say 11 percent and for three years these are 12 percent now, as such, in order to use or to calculate I spread, I need a comparison of bond YTM with swap, but the bond is representing 2.7 years left to maturity. So ideally, the swap should also represent 2.7 years left to maturity. But based on the data, I don't have anything available for 2.7. Now, this is where from level one at times you did linear interpolation, exactly that can be applied here. So if I need a swap rate, for 2.7 years it must lie somewhere between these two 11 and 12 because effectively 11 is 2 12 is 3 2.7 should lie somewhere in between so our assumption in linear interpolation is that this increase from 11 to 12 it must have happened linearly over the entire year now if this increase has happened linearly over the entire year i was starting with two year values plus 
0.7 of difference between third year and second year. So effectively 11 plus 0.7 of the difference 12 minus 11. This would give me a situation where the swap comes out as 11.7%. So just a linear interpolation and I can use this along with this 10% to calculate my spread. So this is sort of the only nuanced part you have added to your level 2 curriculum as such. Aside from that, the spread is calculated just as a difference between two yields. The only sort of new thing is swap in this case might not be matching the maturity of the bonds. So in order to achieve that match, you will have to use linear interpolation for the swaps. That's sort of the only complicated part. Next up, we have TED spread and LIBOR OIS spread. Now, let me first clarify the terminologies. TED represents Treasury Euro Dollar spread. So, effectively, I am comparing Treasury rates with Euro Dollar contracts, Euro Dollar future contracts normally. And LIBOR OIS, LIBOR is the London Interbank Offer Rate and OIS is Overnight Indexed Swap. Now, both of them are representing sort of the same thing. So, I'm going to first write the equation just so that you are clear on that. Then we'll have a discussion. So, this is Euro Dollar minus Treasury rates. Now, this Euro Dollar could be any sort of contract which is happening between the banks. So, LIBOR is also a case of Euro Dollar. And over here, we have LIBOR minus OIS, Overnight Indexed Swap. Now, the thing is, this Euro dollar and this LIBOR, they both represent sort of the same thing. These are contracts that would happen between the banks. So, as such, both of these are representing some sort of interbank rate. And over here, I have Treasury, which is the yield offered by central government bonds. And this is overnight index swap. Overnight index swap is the transaction between banks and the central bank. So effectively uh, repo rate, reverse repo rate for the loans or the borrowings that are done between banks and the respective central bank. That is given the term OIS or this is what it tries to replicate. So both of these are representing sort of my very secure options and both the first terms are representing interbank rates. So both of these spreads are giving me an idea of how secure my banking system in a country is. Because if you think logically, the first rate is the interest rate charged by one bank from another bank. These are transactions happening between two banks. So the first rate, whether it is Euro dollar contract or LIBOR, it represents how much a bank is charging when it is lending the funds to another bank. And the second represents how much the bank is charging when it is lending funds to the government or to the central bank. So effectively, if these spreads are high, it means that the banks are not trusting fellow banks as much as they trust the central government. But if these spreads are very low, it means that the banks trust each other's credit worthiness just as much as they trust the central government and the central bank. So both of them are representing how much stability I have in my banking system. Do my banks trust the credit worthiness of other banks in the system or not? If they don't, then to the other bank, I would charge higher rate than I would to the central government. So both the spreads, if they are higher, they represent some sort of instability in my banking system where the banks don't trust in the credit worthiness of other banks. But if both these spreads are low, it represents a solid banking system as such. Lastly, you have Z spread. Now, this is something I want to discuss in slightly more detail. Now, Z spread is not something that we can explain by way of some equation as such. In order to understand the Z spread, we first have to look at a particular situation of, let's say, a spot curve. Let's say this is my spot curve. Now, we've already established in the previous session that the most ideal rate to use for discounting of future cash flows whenever we have to value the bonds is the spot curve because this represents the best opportunity cost for an investor. As such, when I value the bond using the spot curve, what I get is intrinsic value. 
but in reality we have established an equity in uh, corporate finance for mergers and acquisitions and throughout your level one also that there is a difference between what the value of a security should be and what it actually is intrinsic value represents what the value should be what the value actually is is represented by market price so the situation we have at hand is that intrinsic value and market price they can be different and the value that we get by discounting using just the spot rates for different maturities that is intrinsic value z spread represents the addition or deletion it could be plus or minus both to the entire spot curve so i'll shift the entire spot curve either higher or lower such that my intrinsic value is equal to market price which means what should be my spot curve such that my intrinsic value becomes equal to market price what should i shift my spot curve by such that the intrinsic value equates to the current market price so that shift this distance the small distance this is known as z spread so z spread is not just a point to point addition it is an entire shift of spot curve it is added across all maturities all of these were difference at a given maturity z spread is added across maturities so effectively i use the spot curve as it is i get let's say a uh, intrinsic value of 95 but the bond is trading at 100 what change should i make to the spot curve such that my intrinsic value also comes out to 100 that change portion is the z spread now for you in exam this understanding is the most important thing because if you understand this that is all that's relevant because in exam calculating the value of z spread is something which is beyond the scope of pen paper calculations the reason is it requires complex financial models and of course we do them all in the real world in computer softwares you don't have access to those in your exams due to that reason calculating the exact value of z spread is not something that would be tested in the exam but there are two types of questions that you could get in the exam one is the more common one let's do an example for that so the question directly says that z spread is 100 basis point so 100 basis point equates to 1% and the spot rates are given as follows s1 is 3% s2 is 4% s3 is 6% you have a 4% three-year bond with hundred dollars par calculate intrinsic value or market price both would be same so the question could say anything this type of question is simply using all the knowledge that you have in the previous session if you remember we did valuation using spot rates this is doing the exact same thing the only difference is now if i look at coupon every year i'll get a coupon of four so first year four so far we used to discount the first year's coupon with first year spot rate so this is what we did in the previous session 0 0.03 but with z spread we add it here 0 0.01 because it is 100 basis point is one percent so i'm adding 0 0.01 then second year's coupon one plus this time 4%, so 0 0.04 plus Z spread. And of course, square. So effectively, all I'm doing is at all the R values, R1, R2, R3, all of them would be a sum of spot plus Z. Spot plus Z. And Z would remain same across the maturity. So you won't have Z for first year, for second year, no. Z is going to remain constant throughout the maturity it's the spot rates that are changing so for third year's rate it would be third spot plus z so effectively 104 divided with one plus 
0 0.06, which is the spot rate, plus 0 0.01, the Z spread. This is sort of the only calculation that you could get in the exam. Now, I, I do remember that I said you could get two calculations. This is the one that is most useful because in the second type of question also, you will use this exact calculation. So before we discuss what that second type of question is, quickly give it a try, see what values you're getting for the market price. Now, if you solve for all of this, you will get a value approximately 92.37. So this is one kind of question you could get where the Z spread is given to you. The question or the institute is just interested in knowing whether you know how Z spread is to be implemented or not. So that's why I said, if you understand this meaning, this calculation is fairly intuitive. All I've done is applied this logic in a mathematical sense. That's all I've done. Effectively, I am increasing the spot rate at each maturity by a constant amount, which is the Z spread. The other kind of question is where the question directly says, what is the Z spread? It gives you all other information. So instead, in this question, if I said that instead of giving you this Z spread, I told you that the market price was 92.37. In that case, you can calculate the Z spread, but calculating it outright is very tricky. As I just said, calculating is going to take complex financial models, computer softwares, computer programs. You can't do it on a pen and paper. So how exactly do you deal with that question? The chances of that kind of question coming are very rare, probably 1% even less. But if it does, your exam is MCQ based. So you will have three values of Z given to you in the options A, B, C. They all will give you three values of Z. In that kind of situation, all you have to do is plug in all the values and whichever value gives you intrinsic value equal to market price. That is your correct option. So in case the institute decides to give you a sort of trick question that what should be the Z spread in that situation, Simply use this entire valuation technique and at the end, wherever or whatever value of Z gives you intrinsic value equal to market price, that is going to be your answer. So in that situation, the only thing you can do for the exam is a hit and trial. So the chance of that kind of question coming is very rare. But if it does, there is a workaround. So I hope all of these spreads are clear. It is very important to know what each of them are representing because you could get a theoretical question out of any of these. So I hope all of this is clear. Let's move on to the next portion.